Thank you, Ashley. Again, welcome everyone to today's presentation. What's new in AutoCAD 2022? Um, as Ashley mentioned, my name is Kindred Cooper. I will be the presenter for today. And in the background running Q&A, we've got Greg Fisher. On that note, hopefully everyone can hear me, but if you can't, this slide is for them. Uh, but it also shows the meeting panel where you can enter your questions and Greg will get to those as quickly as possible. We will also try to designate some time at the end of the presentation to address any leftover questions or any that might be kind of a hot topic that everybody will want to know about. <clears throat> uh, getting right into this real quick, just a quick background on Hagerman and Company. If you're not familiar with us, we do have offices from coast to coast uh, now with the way of the world, um, a lot of people being connected remotely and working remotely. Uh, we've got offices to cover coast to coast, but when you're in a remote situation, we can cover anywhere. Um, our field experienced technical staff, that would be myself, Greg, and others like us, we have a combined 175 years of experience. Actually, over that, it's closer to 200, actually. So that's a lot of knowledge that is really at your fingertips. Uh, when you run into an issue or something, you haven't seen it before or an error message, you come to us with a support contract and we can help you out. We've got the field experience under our belt. We've also got over 30 years of software sales and implementation uh, for the entire company. So moving on into this, AutoCAD 2022, let's look at a breakdown of what Autodesk kind of cooked up for us. And they're pushing the industry specific tool sets. They've done that push before in years past, but even more so now we can tie a dollar figure to it to see what kind of benefit there really is. Sure, we can talk about improved productivity all the time, but what does it really mean? How does it really help us? Also with the way the world has changed with remote connectivity and remote offices and satellite offices and working from home and Zoom meetings, Autodesk is also gearing more down the path of working across web application applications and, and mobile devices and mobile connectivity. So you can break down the what's new in three primary segments looking at CAD automations, and that comes in the flavor of the various uh, tool sets that we're going to look at. And then you can get into seamless communication that works across devices, across OS platforms, across the internet. And then the third would be continuous improvement and continuous innovation into the product. So let's look at the first one, the CAD automations. What we're actually talking about here are the seven different automated tool sets that Autodesk has. So AutoCAD is really an umbrella and each segment of that umbrella has a different specific industry that it can target. So you've got AutoCAD mechanical for the mechanical tool set. You've got AutoCAD architecture for the architectural related industries. You've got AutoCAD electrical for electrical schematics designs and panel layout designs. You've got AutoCAD MEP for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing in the architectural side and in the architectural fields. You've got Plant 3D and AutoCAD PNID uh, for plant related piping and PNID uh, symbology and schematics. Then you've got AutoCAD MAP 3D for surveying and raster design, which can actually work in any of those. The big push here, really the big realization, is what do you gain by going to these other tool sets? And they've broken it down for us. So looking at the mechanical tool set, take basic AutoCAD and an operation that might take 100 hours in basic AutoCAD can take as little as 45 hours in AutoCAD mechanical. Now this could be anything from the creation of one drawing start to finish or an entire project start to finish. It's a relatively small project if it's only taking 100 hours, but still, whatever that task is, if it's 100 hours in basic AutoCAD, it can be as low as 45 hours in AutoCAD mechanical. Great, that sounds, that sounds wonderful, but what does it really mean? Well, if you look at 
an average cost of about $25 an hour on salary, that's $1,300 that has been saved on that one project. And again, that could just be one drawing. If you've got 20 of these to do, now you start to have big savings. AutoCAD architecture, similar situation. We're talking a, a process in basic AutoCAD taking 1,000 hours. When you incorporate that into AutoCAD architecture using the tool set and using the intelligence, that 1,000 hours can be shrunk down to just under 400 hours. That's huge. Again, let's look at the math. Look at the, the cost of that. $25 an hour, you're saving $15,000 on that one process or that one drawing or that one project. And if you do three or four of these a year, that's a good chunk of change. AutoCAD Electrical, this is probably the largest percentage of gain of any of the vertical tool sets. I take basic AutoCAD, a process that takes 150 hours. In AutoCAD Electrical, it can be as low as seven and a half hours. Now, you, in order to gain these in any of these verticals, you have to use the intelligence that's built into the tool set. So you can't just get AutoCAD Mechanical and start using it like AutoCAD. No, you have to go in there, work on the symbol libraries, work with the automatic sectioning. Looking at electrical, you have to work with the ladder diagrams, the component library, the panel layout diagrams. When you use those automated tool sets, you gain a lot. You gain productivity, your lead times get less, and you save a lot of money. That savings right there, $3,500 on that one task. MEP, again, this is a, a really high one, 85% productivity gain by using the intelligent tools. So a basic AutoCAD task of 100 hours can be as quick as 15 hours in AutoCAD MEP. There's a $2,000 savings just on that one project. So whatever this task may be in any of these products, let's say you do four of them a month, average that out over the cost of the year, that more than pays for any vertical upgrade or any training you might need on that vertical. And maybe you can end up getting more business because your lead times have gone down. So let's look at the seamless connection of this. What they've done with the way things have shifted over the last one to two years is they're making AutoCAD more readily available on more devices and through more interfaces. So not only are we able to access it and work on it on a computer, but you can also access it and work on it. It's not just viewing, but you can actually work on it on a mobile tablet, on a mobile phone on a surface top device. They've geared it to work on all of these types of devices more seamlessly. And that's a big push. You look at the AutoCAD web app, whether this is an Android device or an Apple device, you go to the appropriate store, you can download that AutoCAD web app and it will run right there on the device. You can also run it through the web browser with some of the tools for AutoCAD 2022. You can actually share a link to the drawing and someone sitting at any computer device with internet access can get to that drawing and they can either view it or they can view and make changes and you get control over which one of those they can do. Again, talking about the AutoCAD mobile app, it's not just a viewer. You can actually edit and create with those mobile applications. Granted, it's not the friendliest environment when you're trying to do this on a cell phone, but if you've got a tablet, that's a lot easier to work with, especially with a stylus, things get so much easier. But on a cell phone, yes, you can. You've got full access as though you were on the tablet or on the computer. Cloud storage connectivity, big push for the cloud. Everybody's starting to push the cloud. What Autodesk has done is it, it has incorporated working with your big name cloud services, Microsoft, Google Drive, Box or Dropbox. There are others out there that the program will work seamlessly with to allow you to upload. You've got Autodesk's own Autodesk Docs that it can work with, A360, BIM360. All of those are available for cloud storage. 
And the point of that is, of course, collaboration. We can store it up on the cloud. We can send it out, whatever that cloud might be. We can send it out, notify everybody, hey, this is there. Go take a look. Somebody's out in the field. They're working on something. They make some changes or make some markups. They send it back. Shout out to the office. Get these changes made so we can get this product done, and get it out here in the field. We've got to work around this little thing or work over this thing. You've got that collaboration as though everybody is right there looking at it. Now, when you talk about continuous improvement, one thing that usually comes up is new stuff. This is new. That is new. That's a streamlined tool. That's an enhanced tool. That's what happens. This one's going to shock you the first bit. 2018 DWG format persists into the 2022 version. The reason this is continuous improvement and continuous innovation is by sticking with the 2018 format, Autodesk makes DWG interaction more available to more devices, more operating systems, and more programs. You've got your small mom and pop shops out there that maybe they can't upgrade every year. So now they can stick with possibly an older version to communicate with the larger corporations that have upgraded. Keeps everybody on the same page so you don't get into translations, extra work, or even failed translations, which can come up. So looking at some of the enhancements we're going to take a look at, of course, customizable installation. They've really put a lot into reducing the installation times. That's something the current uh, CEO of Autodesk, when he was hired on, he said, we're going to shorten that installation. Of course, they all say that. He really did it. He pushed them and pushed them. And the installation of AutoCAD 2022 on my system typically was a 20 to 25 minute process. This release, it was eight minutes and it was done. I was ready to work. You've got graphical improvements. They've redesigned the start tab quite a bit to make it more user friendly. Some of the new commands they've introduced is the trace command. Now, it might not be trace that you initially think of. We're not talking about like a raster trace or something like that. We're talking about tracing the changes in a review process or in a markup process. And all of this takes place outside of any kind of document management system like Autodesk Vault. This is a standalone a piece of technology inside of AutoCAD. So you don't need anything else. It comes with 2022. The other thing gets into the collaboration and that's the sharing. You can take your drawing and you can post it out. You can share a link out for someone else to either view it. As you see on the screenshot, you have the two options. You can view only or you can edit and save a copy of it. And then you can Preview that link, copy that link, email it out, text it out, however you need to get it to them. Again, on the collaboration note is pushing that file or that drawing out to Autodesk Docs. So it will automatically create each uh, sheet that you want to publish. Uh, if you've got a drawing with five or six uh, different layout sheets, you can choose which of those you want to push out. All of them, two or three, just one you pick and choose and it pushes it out to Autodesk Docs as a PDF. Anyone who is uh, shared or invited to that project on Autodesk Docs, they have access to go in there and either view or edit and save a copy. And again, that's your choice on what they can do. Probably one of the biggest time savers they have introduced in a long time. I wish I would have had this in my past life. There is a utility in here called Count. And what it does is it generates an automatic count of blocks and geometry and it updates in real time and it reduces any kind of human error when we're out here counting things and we count something twice or miss counting some things. And again, it updates in real time and you can use that information. It's not just a, a static snapshot. We can actually pull that information in and retrieve it. Floating windows. Long time have people ask for floating windows in AutoCAD. So in my situation, I've got three different monitors. I've got two side by side, and then I've got a larger one above and in the center. And I can undock different drawings into each monitor. 
so maybe you've got a floor plan layout on one monitor and on the other monitor you've got an elevation view or in mechanical sense you've got a ladder diagram on one and a panel layout on the other or mechanical section cut on one and then a detail piece part on the other so I can't show that um, the the web interface limits me to only showing one screen at a time uh, but at least I could show you here's a view of my desktop I blurred out all the clutter and junk around it but you can see three individual drawings on three different monitors so now let's get to the actual demonstration of all of this um, starting off in the installation they've streamlined it you don't have a lot of bells and whistles that you have to go in there and turn on you take all the defaults and you're getting everything you don't have to go into the options and turn on express tools anymore it's already there uh, even in the vertical products such as AutoCAD electrical if you do any kind of installations with electrical you'll know that it has a ton of component libraries and it can take a minute to sit there and select all the component libraries uh, it, it takes more than a minute to install all of those component libraries all of that is done for you you don't have to go in there and tweak it uh, to turn on turn on libraries and turn off libraries to get them to install <clears throat> next we're going to look at the start tab and the enhancements they've made so the the start tab was introduced a couple of versions ago and instead of saying redesign what they actually done is they've started to incorporate other aspects into the start tab and the start tab is a, a nice home to look at to give you an overall picture there's a lot going on in here that you may look over first and foremost down the right hand side you'll see an announcements section now this could be bulletins it could be a new features announcement it could be a service pack just got released type of thing and there's also how to's that show up in here there's little tech tip articles and things like that from various sources that Autodesk is pulling from so it's definitely worth checking this out also down at the very bottom something a lot of people have asked for for a long time how do i send feedback to autodesk of course you can send that through us but autodesk has pushed more and more to a direct line to every user not just the resellers but every end user they want to get that direct feedback not through proxy so you can send feedback to autodesk hey fix this tool or update this you know kind of thing so looking in the center we've got the recent files layout and they've incorporated the thumbnails similar to what some of the other Autodesk vertical products like Inventor and Revit have had for a number of years uh, looking through here as you hover on each thumbnail you get some controls for that you can open that file you can open it as a read only you can actually click the push pin and that'll hold it to the recent list so no matter how many files you open up that one will always be right there first and foremost and you can do that to multiple files you can also see where that file is and this is super handy considering all the connectivity that we're getting into now if you look down below the three dots you'll see either a computer screen or you'll see a cloud that lets you know where that file is currently stored at least for that thumbnail I do have a local version of this one you can see it right here next to it you'll notice the thumbnails are different so the cloud version has zoomed out all the way the local version is zoomed in on one small view so you can scroll through this as you open more files of course this list is going to get longer and you can control how many are in here through your AutoCAD options just like you always have it's the same standard file recent list over on the right hand side they've incorporated if you can open files or start a new file directly from the menu and down below that you can change the center portion of AutoCAD to either display recently viewed files or switch to your Autodesk Docs now little caveat to this one this will not initially load anything from Autodesk Docs as soon as you install AutoCAD 22 this is going to come up and say you need to install the desktop connector it's a small little plug-in you can get to it right from the message it pops up and the connector is simply this little guy right here 
Uh, it's a little executable that you run. It's not very large at all, as you see. 371 meg in the grand scheme of things, that's pretty small nowadays. Uh, you're going to run this installer or your IT is going to run this installer with AutoCAD shutdown. You want to make sure all of your Autodesk products are completely shut down before you run this. So once you run that, then come in here, start up your uh, AutoCAD, and you'll have access to come in here and view what's in your Autodesk docs. Now, the other portion of that is you can open it up in a web browser, runs through the BIM 360 site, and here we can see that I've got access to my different projects and see if anything is in there. Down below that, you have a learning section. Kind of goes with the announcements. Some of the things that are in the announcements panel over on the right hand side will show up in here. Some learning videos, how to videos, new features, things like that. Of course, you've got a what's new section at the bottom, online help, access to community forums, things like that. Now let's get into the floating drawings tabs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm actually gonna open up a couple of different drawings here. So I've got this one site layout. I'll open up this one from my local and I'll open up one more. We'll go with uh, the civil drawing. So what you can do is, granted you're not gonna be able to see all three of my monitors, but you'll see the effect. You can take the tabs that delineate each drawing across the top, left click and hold down on that tab and just drag it away. And as soon as you do, it undocks that window from the AutoCAD interface and it puts it in a smaller window for itself. Now, at this point, whether you want to tile them here in the AutoCAD application or if you wanna shift them over into another monitor. As you see, I'm now on my monitor on the left and I'm just dragging this window off. I can also drag it up or I can dock it. I can drag it up to my third monitor at the top and it's actually split on all three of them right now. And you can do that with as many drawings as you wish. Again, you just left click, hold down on that tab, drag it away and pull it over to whatever monitor you wish. Now, when you do this, your command interface does not move with it. Only the drawing contents in that tab move with it. You have both the model and the layout tabs with that drawing window, but all of your AutoCAD commands stay with the source application. Now, to get these redocked back into the application, you simply grab their title bar, left click and hold down, pull it up here to the top, and you'll see a blue tab show up and it'll highlight the graphics window. That's going to dock it back into the main application interface whether you're coming from the same monitor or another monitor, the workflow is the same. Now let's look at the live block count. This is the one that I said was a huge time saver, probably one of the biggest time savers I've seen in a long time in basic vanilla AutoCAD. If you look at the interface on the view ribbon, on the palettes panel, there is a count command. When I bring up the count, instantly I get feedback on the different blocks and things that I have in this drawing. I'm getting a real time count. How many imperial doors do I have? Well, I have two of them. Uh, how many of that particular door? Two foot six, I have six of them. A three foot door, nine of them. What about these guys here? I've got an HVAC return and I've got some outlets. Well, if I look at the HVAC return, if I click on it, in the graphics area, it's actually highlighting. You'll notice everything else kind of gets darkened down a little bit. Uh, it's highlighting the counts for the HVAC return. Now, look at this very carefully. In the report, it shows one as the count, but in the graphics window, I've got two of them. I've got a highlighted green one and a highlighted red one. You'll also notice in the report, there's an error associated with this count. If I click on that error or the error triangle, it takes me to a report for that block. So it's showing me HVAC return, you've got one, and then you've got a count error of one exploded block. So what this actually is, if I click on this, it will zoom in to the one that's highlighted red. The reason it's reporting this is this is actually it was originally the block for the HVAC return. 
So it was originally just like this one over here that's highlighted in green, but I exploded it. It will report those exploded objects because it's still got some polyline geometry in here that's associated with that previous block definition. If I continue to explode it or if I erase it, that error count will go away. The other thing you can look at in here, if I go back to the list, is looking at the outlets. This is a good quick way to get a count, especially for a supply list or a bill of materials or a schedule list. If I look at the different power outlets that I've got here, it shows I've got 39 of them. So when I select the outlet, of course, they all highlight green, except I've got one red one and I've got an error. So what is this error? If I look at it, you'll notice the previous error was an exploded block reference. This one, however, says overlapping objects. So where I see that red highlighted object, I've got two of them overlapping each other. Of course, that's an easy fix. I either have two outlets stacked and that's the way it's going to be built or I need to get rid of one of them and it was just simply a, a duplicate. So now if I come out here and I erase, pick one, notice the error goes away in real time. When I go back to my list, that error has been cleared. Now the other thing you can do with this is you can insert a count for this. So you either insert an individual count. So if I'm looking at the outlets, I can insert an individual count right here. And I've got my text set really small, but I'll zoom in and show you that it's reporting 39 of those outlets. Of course, I can change the text height and things like that. So if I look at this and set it to maybe um, eight inches, that way we can zoom out and we can see it. Okay, so we've got 39. I can edit this. I can put uh, standard text in front of it, outlets equals 39 of them. Well, didn't mean to go to the next line. So the actual field text that's going to update is what is highlighted. Now, if you print this out, the highlight is not going to show. That gray block is not going to show. If you've done anything with inserting fields in AutoCAD, it works the same way. You, the highlight will show up graphically, but when you print it out, it's not there. It looks like every other piece of text. So let's make a change. I've got 39 outlets. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to copy it in here a couple of times. So maybe we put two on that wall. Well, try again. Let's copy that outlet. Maybe one down here. And let's copy this outlet over. Maybe one right there. So I added two of them. Now you'll notice in the report it was updating in real time. Every time I placed a copy, it updated instantly. But my text field did not. This piece of information or this behavior works the same way standard AutoCAD fields do. In order to get them to update, you simply regen the drawing, so RE for regen, or you hit save. Either one of them is going to invoke a regen operation and it updates that field of information. So even if you forget to hit a regen, as soon as you come up here and hit save, all of the fields are updated right then. So the next person that opens that drawing gets the updated information. Now, what if we needed multiple things? What if we wanted a table that displays multiple things in here? So let's say we look at outlets, we look at uh, three foot doors and two foot six doors. Well, at the top of the count uh, tool palette, you have a table command. This allows you to select multiple entries. So we'll go with the two foot six door, the three foot door. Go ahead and put lights in there and outlets and switches. There's a good supply list that we're going to need. So once I get those selected, I can insert that table. And again, my text style and everything is set small. So of course I can just scale this up, change the text height and table styles and things like that. It follows whatever you have as your default. And there's my table of information. Works the same way as the field text from the other entry. If I insert more two foot six doors, the utility in the tool palette will update automatically. The table will only update once I hit regen or I hit save. So the count utility can save a lot of time, especially in an inventory sense. Now let's look at traces and, and what traces actually are. 
let me close down a couple of these and we'll go with we'll go with this one close down the count tool palette now traces are part of the collaboration section of AutoCAD so if you look on the collaborate ribbon you'll notice there is a traces palette now initially there's no traces in this drawing none have been created or set up so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to share this drawing out so somebody else can make some traces so you can do that with the share drawing command this is where you get the option to either share it as a view only or read only uh, link or they can edit and save a copy now this is the only time you get to choose that action so if you choose for them to edit and save a copy that's what they're going to be able to do uh, if you need to lock them out then you need to redo this process and share it as a view only so I'm going to choose the edit and save a copy I can copy that link I can now send it out in an email send it to whomever is going to be working on this and taking a look at it take it over here and I'm going to put it into a new browser window it does require a sign in so once you sign in, you'll notice the drawing is being opened in the internet browser. It's not launching another section of Auto or another instance of AutoCAD. It's not launching any kind of lightweight view or anything. It stays in the browser itself. Now in here, you've got all your traditional, well, let me back up. If, if you send it out as view and edit and save a copy, then you have access to all the traditional familiar AutoCAD commands. So if somebody is back in the shop and they're out there in the actual shop and not in their office and they're coordinating with somebody out in the field, they can sit there with a Surface or a tablet device and they can actually work on this drawing. And maybe the field is communicating back or the shop is communicating back to the office. Okay, we've got a problem on this. First and foremost, the views don't line up. We got the edge of the lid. Things are a little undersized. We need to fix that. So graphical error, the dimensions are right, but we want the drawing to look correct. So looking down across the bottom, you've got drawing commands to sketch out rectangles, circles, polylines, spline curves, patterns. You've got an annotate tab to measure things, put in a rev cloud, take dimensions, put in text, and you can do modifications, move, copy, scale, rotate, things of that nature. Down the left-hand side, you've got different properties for if you select on something, it'll show you the properties of that object. You've got various layers. And of course, these are the layers that were built into the DWG. If there are any nested blocks, of course, you can insert those. If there are any nested XREFs that may not be displayed, you can enable those. Then you can create traces. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna call that layer traces. And I can change the color of that layer to obviously you want it to be something that's not already in use on the drawing that way it stands out so i don't have anything out here yellow so i'll just set that uh, trace layer color to yellow of course you can turn layers off you can lock layers you can change their color but now that i've got traces uh, created with the assigned color i'm going to come over here to the traces palette and i'm going to create a new trace so once i do that if I want this trace to stand out visually, I need to change my layer to the traces layer. Doesn't matter what your current layer is, when you go into traces, it defaults back to zero and you have to set your layer. So I set my layer to traces. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a revision cloud and we need to adjust the edge of the lid of this container, container that we're going to make. And now I'll just zoom in and I'll put a piece of M text. And we're going to say, uh, please correct edge alignment. Wow, if I can spell. Got even worse. Uh, let's say edges appear to be undersized. and just fix my spelling okay there we go we've got our note of course we can change the text height of this things like that make it stand out easier if we want that's the only trace i'm going to make that's the only one i'm worried about so i'm going to zoom out and across the top it's marked it with my initials because i'm signed in using my login credentials and i'm going to complete the trace 
Now, when I do that, it goes back to the drawing and it looks like it disappeared. It looks like he got rid of it. It didn't, it just turned it off. So if you look over here on the left-hand side in the palette pull down, you'll see the trace. I can select on it, it takes me back into the trace environment. I can make changes, add more traces, whatever you need to do. So what I actually wanna do is I wanna take this and now that it's marked up, I wanna send it back to the guy in the office who's sitting there at his desk. What I need to do is I need to save this and I'm just gonna give it a name called traces and save it. Now I can take this link and send it back to him if I want to. I can respond to him say, hey, open from that link. Um, if I'm on my own system, I can also say, well, let's just go open it up in the desktop. Now, the gotcha here is I need to close it down first so that I can come back to that and open it in the desktop. There could be a little bit of a delay for this to actually fire up and work. You'll see it says continue in the web or retry. So there could be a little bit of a communication delay. So I'm gonna retry it. And there was a login screen that fired up on my other monitor that you didn't see. And now it loads into AutoCAD. This is my full blown AutoCAD. As you see, all of my interface is there, all of my commands, everything is there. So if I look on the collaborate portion and I bring up the traces palette, there's the trace that the guy out in the shop created. When I click on that, it takes me into that trace and I can see what changes I need to make. And once I'm done, I can blow away this trace. I can rename it and say trace complete or changes complete or just completely delete it. So traces allow you to do that communication across distances, <laughs> across platforms. This could be done on a Droid device or an Apple device or a cell phone. A tablet or cell phone or another computer or laptop that's out in the field. Now the other collaboration option you have is being able to push that file to Autodesk Docs and to do that I'm going to work with a different one that has multiple um, layout tabs set up. So I've got two layout tabs set up for this fundamentals drawing this house uh, floor plan. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to push this to Autodesk Docs and the the kicker here that you got to be aware of if you go to your layout tabs you're probably going to have a page set up created for this assigned to a particular plotter and what you need to do is whether you change the one that's there or you create a new one you need to have one set that is an AutoCAD PDF now you've got a couple of different PDFs that come with the software, so you don't have to install or configure anything from scratch. They're already there. But you wanna have a layout created, or at least a page setup created that you can quickly reference that is pre-mapped to an AutoCAD PDF. If they're not mapped to a PDF, you're gonna get a publish error. So you wanna have that done for all the tabs that you wish to publish. So I've got an A size and a D size tab. I'm gonna publish both of these out to Autodesk Docs. So when I choose that, it automatically loads both tabs. Now, if there are some tabs that it doesn't load, you can add more tabs to this. If you don't wanna load certain tabs, maybe you've got you know, 10 different layout sheets down here and you don't need all of them, you only need one. So you can actually remove those tabs if you wish. You can open a sheet set because you can save this as a JSON file, and you can save this as a predetermined sheet set. So if this is something you're probably gonna be pushing frequently, and you've gotta make changes to which sheets you wanna push and which ones you don't, you probably wanna save this as a JSON sheet set. And if you do that, of course, you can come in here and you can open that sheet set and push that one out. So when I upload the sheets to Autodesk Docs, it accesses the Autodesk Docs on BIM 360, goes to my project that I have set up or a project that I'm invited to. If you've got multiple projects, they'll appear here at the top. Then you can choose what subfolder you may want to uh, have these published to. You cannot create any subfolders here. You'll have to do that on the BIM 360 site in, inside of Autodesk Docs. Uh, but you just choose whatever folder you want to publish them to. Hit OK. You'll get a published notice, whether everything was fine or not fine. 
come back in here to Autodesk Docs and it starts to refresh and you'll see both of those uh, sheets show up as PDFs. So that now somebody can pull these up, print them off, review them, whatever they need to do. All right. Back into the presentation real quick. Some of the benefits from subscription and having your software on subscription is the technical support. There is uh, technical support available from Hagerman that does require a separate support contract purchase. There is also support from Autodesk Direct. Um, response times from Autodesk Direct are slower than from Hagerman. We typically respond within 30 minutes to an hour. Unless things are really backed up, it could take a little bit longer. With Autodesk, their turnaround time, as they advertise, is 24 hours uh, to get a response. You also have access to up-to-date software with the desktop app. If you're on subscription, it'll automatically update with service packs and hotfixes. You've got some flexibility for when you need to use your software. A couple of years ago, they introduced the rent to use concept for software, uh, which initially didn't, didn't catch on, but suddenly there was a surge, especially in the architectural field. When projects started to boom, so, uh, some of the facilities out there and some of the architectural firms started renting the seats and they projected, okay, we're gonna need it for six months instead of the entire year. So it's actually saving them money in the long term. Uh, you also have access to administrative tools through the Autodesk site to manage your license, manage teams of licenses and users, uh, which products can users access. Instead of installing everything, you determine which ones they're gonna use and have access to. Um, of course, it's trusted. AutoCAD is the de facto standard of engineering, has been for 20 plus years. You either communicate in a DWG or a PDF, and that's the way the world has gone to. The new mobility makes it a lot more flexible uh, in any environment, whether it's out in the field, in the office, or in the shop, or just communicating with some of your business partners, uh, some of the partner teams and companies you may partner up with to complete a project. So at this time, let's go ahead and address any leftover Q&A. Greg, how are we looking on the Q&A log? We're looking pretty good, but I need, do need to refer to you on a couple of the questions that I got stumped on. Um, one being, and I think I know the answer to this, but I wanted to refer to you as well. They no longer have a local server. Um, so do we store the DST file for sheet sets on M360? Uh, you can. One of the options is when you do a save in the when you're trying to save the sheet set, you should have the option in there to save to Autodesk Docs. Now, I will say that Autodesk Docs is a licensed service. It is not a freebie that comes with the software that you can just use willy nilly. It's not like A360. There will be a license license purchase needed for that. I'm not sure of the cost. From what I understand, it's minimal. Uh, but you will need some kind of licensing assignment, purchase and assignment uh, to access Autodesk Docs. Um, otherwise, you can use one of the semi-free sites like Dropbox or Google Drive. Okay, and the other one I wasn't sure on is... Can someone open this drawing link and view the drawing without having the AutoCAD software app? Yes, because it opens in a web browser. So when you send the link to someone, again, whether it's email or text, they're gonna open that by default. The operating system is gonna take them to a web browser and using the plugins in the modern browsers that we have now, whether it's Internet Explorer or Edge or Chrome or Firefox, I use Firefox. And I didn't have to download anything other than the typical updates for Firefox. I didn't have to download a separate uh, plugin for that to, to work. So 
it's going to open it up in the web browser and embedded in that is going to be access to the AutoCAD like tools. So they don't need to have AutoCAD at all. They don't even need to have AutoCAD LT because it's going to stay in the web browser. Okay, perfect. Now here's two brand new ones. One, can you demo count using only a selection of blocks? Thank you. And the last one is export and import files to Inventor. Is that still the same? That's a separate okay. question. Uh, demoing the count, selection of blocks. So let's go back here to the applied fundamentals. Whenever you're looking at the count utility, you can select as many blocks as you wish. So if I only select the outlet, that's the only one that lights up. Everything else gets grayed out. But if I hold down the control key, I can select HVAC. Sorry, I said that. It's got to be the table. That's where it shows up. If you switch to the table option, whether you're going to insert a table or not, uh, if you switch to the table option, select your outlets, control key, you can select the check boxes and it'll start lighting them up as you select them and hover over them. Now, it's only going to light up those that you are currently on, whether selected or not. But if you want to use that information, you have to select that line item to insert it in the table. So right now, you'll notice I've got outlets and HVAC return both checked to put into a table, but I've got the sink selected. The only one that's highlighting is the sink. Um, if you need it to highlight certain blocks, you're actually not looking at the count utility, you're looking at a selection utility that's part of the properties panel. Been there for well over 10 plus years. Yep. Um, this is actually to gather those counts to insert into a table and get access to that information. If you just want to display them, then you're looking at the quick select to select objects and filter it. Uh, the other question, export and import files to Inventor. Is that still the same? Um, well, <laughs> depends on what you're asking if it's still the same. When you're working with a 3D model and you can save as, you can save as other formats and you can also export out to DWIF, 3D DWIF, PDF, and other formats allows you to output to an ASUS SAT file. You can output to an IGES, and you'll need AutoCAD. You'll need one of the verticals, actually. Uh, AutoCAD Mechanical, AutoCAD Electrical, Architecture, MEP, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you'll need one of the verticals to actually step out uh, to get the file into Inventor. If you're coming from AutoCAD, either STEP or SAT, that's really your two formats you need to stick with. They, they have the least amount of translation issues. Can I select only outlets in one room? Um, no, the count utility doesn't allow for delineation of where it's at. It's looking at the entire drawing. You could try something with a filter selection or maybe blocks embedded in a block. You could do some tricks like that, but um, the only other way to do that might be setting up custom layers per room and you would have master bedroom dash outlets as one layer, bedroom one dash outlets as another layer. And if you turn that layer off, then you can filter it down that way, but not, not directly through the count utility. And then two new ones. What is the plus symbol for in count table? Plus symbol. Oh, and the other one was just to thank you. So, oh, that to look at any um, sub blocks. Th this is a dynamic block. So, you've got other options for that block down below it that are embedded into that. And you'll notice the uh, count reflects the total of that parent um, uh, dynamic block. So, trees, vehicles, there are multiple options in there and it's showing the ones that are used for that dynamic box. So it's not showing all of them available. Uh, for example, if you look at the trees or even the uh, toilets, they have, I think trees has 12 different built into it, and this is the one that comes with the software. 
uh, 12 different tree blocks that are built into it. It's only showing these three that I inserted and it's got to count for each one of them. Okay. That's all we got. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. If you have any further questions, I recommend you get in uh, contact with your Hagerman sales rep and look out for some of the YouTube videos that we put out and check out the Hagerman hub for new tech tips and blog articles we're going to be releasing on the 2022 software versions. And again, thanks for attending.